thanks for all thank you all for uh being here i hope you're doing well um yeah i was able to get my, get an appointment for a vaccine so i got my first dose and feeling really happy about that and can't wait till everybody is um vaccinated hopefully it sounds like it's, it's coming fast sounds like even some of you are being able to get vaccinated so that's awesome um let's uh let's see in terms of announcements today's wednesday um, we are going to continue our coverage of chapter 18. We'll finish chapter 18 on Monday with any luck. Review on Wednesday, exam on Thursday. Okay, so that's the plan. And then uh, what, after that, we get a little spring break, right? So that'll be nice. Um, <clears throat> I'm working on my internet issues. I just ordered a new modem, so I hope that'll solve the problem. Right now, I'm using my um, hotspot from my phone and um, hopefully that will work for today if if I start to get broken up or whatever just please uh, send something in the chat or or yell something out and let me know and I'll try to repeat myself so that we don't run in the same problem we did last time okay uh, the exam I think I'll do the same as last time what did I do last time I start I opened it at 11 a.m and I closed it like at midnight is that what I did so I think I'll probably do something like that again. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any uh, any other questions before we get going today? Okay. I don't see any. <clears throat> so remember, last time uh, we were talking about buffers, and so buffers are remember solutions that resist pH change. And how do you recognize them? When you see a significant amount of an acid, a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So an example of a acid and its conjugate base would be something like HC2H3O2. So suppose you have 0.1 molar solution of that and combined with 0.1 molar of sodium acetate, right? You would go ding, 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 that's a buffer, right? Or uh, a weak base, let's say 0.1 molar ammonia and 0.1 molar ammonium chloride, right? That's a weak base and it's conjugate acid. Ding, 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 you know you have a buffer, okay? The key is you gotta have significant amounts of both, all right? So keep that in mind. Whenever you have a buffer, you can go straight to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid, okay? In this particular equation, you can work in either molarity or moles. It doesn't matter, either one works. Why is that? Because um, if you have molarity, the units of, of volume cancel, right? Because they're both in the same uh, solution. Okay, what's going on here with my screen? Okay, I hope, hopefully that's working. Um, <clears throat> then the other thing to review and keep in mind is these four equations, right? Two for equilibrium, one for a weak acid ionizing, the other one for a weak base ionizing, right? These are both equilibrium reactions. For equilibrium reactions, you're going to work in an ice table and you're going to use units of molarity every time, okay? The other two equations to keep in mind are these two down here. These are neutralization reactions. This is what happens when you add uh, base to a weak acid or when you add base to a buffer, all right? And uh, this is what happens when you add acid to a weak base or acid to a buffer, okay? And these are stoichiometry. These go to completion. The kind of table we're using for those are BA tables before addition and after. And you're always gonna work in moles, not molarity. All right. All right. So now we're going to turn our attention to buffer range and buffer capacity. All right. Um, we already talked about this. Uh, did we do this example last time? We did it, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, this is just figuring out the, B, the pH range of a buffer. Okay, so 
Buffer effectiveness, we're going to look at two criteria for buffer effectiveness. The first one is the relative amounts of acids and base. In other words, does it matter in a buffer if you have more of the acid and less of the base, conjugate base, or more of the conjugate base and less of the acid, or is it best if they're balanced? What's, how is the buffer most effective in terms of the two components? All right, so that's the first question. The second question we're going to ask is, well, what about absolute amounts of acid and base? Do buffers neutralize uh, incoming acid or base better if they're more concentrated or if they're more dilute, all right? So those are the two questions we wanna ask and get answers to. So first, the relative amounts of acid and base. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a buffer that is 0.1 mole HA and 0.1 mole A minus, so some generic acid and some conjugate base. And let's say for this acid, the pKa is five, right? So that the initial pH is five, okay? And then we're gonna ask, okay, what happens when we take this buffer and add 0.10 moles, 0 0.010 moles of strong base to it, all right? So out of these four equations, right? If I have a buffer and I add strong base, which equation am I using? One, two, three, or four? Three. Three, exactly right. You're using equation three, very good. That's key, right? Being able to, to, to identify the equation you use to solve the problem is very, very important, okay? And you know it's this equation because you're adding strong base, right? OH minus, and you know you're adding it to a buffer, so it's gonna react with the acid component, right? So here's that equation, it's written these are written in reverse order, but it doesn't matter, okay? So before addition, I have 0.1 moles of the weak acid and 0.1 moles of the conjugate base. I add 0.010 moles of hydroxide. And so remember what happens, the hydroxide reacts with the weak acid, right? And since I have 0.010 moles of OH minus and 0.1 moles of this, this is gonna get all used up, right? This will completely react. I'll end up with zero, about zero OH minus, not exactly zero, because that's what we're trying to calculate, right? This will go down by 0 0.010, because 0 0.010 moles of this will get used up when it neutralizes the OH minus, right? So that'll go down to 0 0.090. As the reaction occurs, right, if 0 0.010 moles of this react, I'm gonna form 0 0.010 moles of, o, of A minus, right? So that means that I have to add 0.010 moles of A minus to the 0.1 that were already there. Okay, so these are my new amounts. I figure out my pH and it's 5.09. So notice for this buffer that had a balanced amount of acid and conjugate base, its initial pH was five and then the pH jumped up to 5.09 when I added the base. So far so good? Does that make sense? Okay, now, what happens um, if I don't have a balanced amount of acid and base? So for example, look at this buffer. It has the same total amount of acid and base, 0.2 moles, but it's skewed on the side of the weak acid. In other words, I have 0.18 moles of the weak acid HA and only 0.02 moles of its conjugate base A minus. So it's a much less balanced buffer, right? Its initial pH, if I calculate it using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, right, is 4.05. It's different, right? Because there's different amounts of the two components, okay? Now, when I add 0 0.010 moles of OH minus to that, again, there's more moles of the weak acid. So that gets completely consumed, it goes to zero. The weak acid goes down by 0 0.01, right? And the conjugate base goes up by 0 0.01, right? So the pH goes to 4.25. So notice the difference here. pH for this buffer went from 4.05 to 4.25. The pH for this buffer went to 5 to 5.09. So what's better, to have the two buffer components balanced or to have them unbalanced? Balanced. Balanced. Balanced, right? A balanced buffer, one that has as close as possible of the two different components is going to be the better buffer. It's going to be more effective, right? It's not going to it's going to resist pH change a little bit better. Okay, does that make sense?
Questions on that? Ryland. Does that depend on like, in that example you just gave, we had more of the acid? Yeah. Right? And right, so, more of the acid, yep. So when we added acid, it, oh no, we when we added base, it changed more like, I guess, does it depend on which one you have more of? Um, the way so, so we'll get to um, the capacity of a buffer in a minute. And yes, it depends on which one you have more of in terms of the capacity. But this effect that you see here will happen even if these are switched. Okay, so it's Thank always you. better. The more balanced the buffer can be in terms of similar amounts of acid and conjugate base, the better the buffer, the more effective it is. Got okay. it. All right, so. So let's just, uh, maybe I'll just write that down. One, point one here. Um, uh, a buffer with equal amounts of acid and conjugate base is more effective than one with unequal amounts. Okay, that's the point of this calculation here. I just wanted to demonstrate that that was the case. All right. Now, what about absolute amounts of acid and base? How does that affect the how does that affect the effectiveness of a buffer? All right. So here we have a buffer that's 0.5 moles acid, 0.5 moles conjugate base. And here we have one that's 0.05 moles acid and 0.05 moles conjugate base. So this buffer is more concentrated in that it has more of both buffer components than this buffer, yeah? So again, we're gonna do the same thing. The initial pH here is five. We're gonna add 0.010 moles of, of base. What's that gonna do? It's gonna bring this down from 0.5 to 0.49. It's gonna bring this up from 0.5 to 0.51. Plug into Henderson Hasselbach, and we see a pH change of 0.02. So it goes to 5.02. So here the pH changes from 5 to 5.02. Yeah. Over here, this more dilute buffer, again, because the two buffer components are exactly balanced, the pH is just the same as here. It's still 5, right? Because pH is just going to be equal to pKa. All right. And now though, when I add the OH minus, this goes from 0 0.050 to 0 0.040. This goes up from 0 0.050 to 0 0.060. When I plug back into my henderson hasselbach equation, I find that the pH is 5.18. All right, so this went from five to 5.18. So what's better, a more concentrated buffer, or, or sorry, what's more effective, a more concentrated buffer or a more dilute buffer? Concentrated. Concentrated too. Okay. So a concentrated buffer is more effective than a dilute buffer. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, so we're going to say that um, a buffer will be most effective, right, when the ratio of these two things are, is, is exactly one. In other words, when it's a one-to-one -one ratio, right, when they're exactly balanced. But we can have a pretty effective buffer even if they're not balanced. Not as effective. The most effective buffer will have this ratio equal to one. But we can still have an effective buffer even if it's not, all right? And sometimes when we want to tune in the pH of the buffer, we have to change the relative amounts of the acid and base to get the pH we want, okay? So we're gonna say that a buffer will be effective as long as this ratio is not more than 10 to one or one to 10, right? So I can have 10 times as much base as acid or 10 times as much acid as base and that a buffer will be effective in that range but that it won't be effective really outside of that range. So it's a little bit of an arbitrary line in the sand but that's just what we're gonna call it, okay? Um, and then a buffer will be most effective when the concentration of acid in the base are large, 
right? So the more concentrated the acid in the base, the more effective the buffer. Now, given this, right, it's effective from 0.1 to 10, what, over what uh, range can you make a buffer, right? Well, let's plug into the henderson hasselbalch equation and figure that out. Let's say we have a buffer with some pKa. The most negative that that buffer will be effective will be when, when A minus is, when this ratio is one to 10, right? So when that ratio is one to 10, let's say 0.1 molar and one molar, right? Then the pH is gonna be equal to pKa minus one, right? Because the log of 0.1 is minus one, all right? So in other words, if a buffer has a, PA, a pKa of five, right? You can, sorry, if, if, if the acid of a buffer, the weak acid in a buffer has a pKa of five, right? You can make an effective buffer with that acid and its conjugate base, but only down to a pH of four, right? pKa minus one. Similarly, the highest pH will be when the ratio is 10 to one, right? At that point, you get the log of 10, that's one, right? So uh, a buffer can be effective at pH equals pKa plus or minus one, right? So for example, if I have a buffer with a pKa of three, sorry, if I have a buffer and I use an acid that has a pKa of three, right? Can I make that into an effective buffer solution that ultimately has a pH of two? No, right? Has to be one pH unit on either side of pKa, right? So if pKa, if, uh, if, pKa equals three, right? For a particular acid, then I can go anywhere from two to four. I can make an effective buffer, right? And I would do that by just playing around with the concentrations of base and acid, right? To get the right ratio there to get the pH I want, okay? Does that make sense? Let me ask you a question and see if we're getting it here. Um, so this last point is important. When choosing an acid to make a buffer, choose one whose pKa is closest to the pH of the buffer you want to make, right? You want to pick an acid whose pKa is close to the pH of the acid of the buffer you want to make. Okay, try to answer this question for me. Let's see if you're getting this.
Sorry, guys, I'm uh, having some technical difficulties here. One second. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm struggling with some power issues here. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I apologize. I had some, uh, it's gonna run out of power there and that would have been catastrophic. <laughs> All right, let's see, where are we? Uh, the right answer was B and it looks like uh, most of you got that. So what you wanna do is you wanna say, okay, 4.55 with that particular, um, 
to get a pH of 4.55, you want to pick a pKa that's closest to that, right? So that would be 4.25, okay? All right, very good. Um, awesome. All right, I see there's a couple questions. Sophia. Hi. Um, Hi. I think I forgot my question, but... <laughs> oh, um, no, I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem. I, I apologize, it's my fault. I, uh, That's okay. Taylor. Uh, I just have a uh, simple question with the concentration of yeah. the um, buffer. Yeah. So is it, um, if you lower the buffer concentration and you lower what you're adding, is it still the same amount of change? Does that make sense? Uh, proportionally, I'd have to do the calculation to see. I don't think so because of the log function in there. Okay. I kind so of thought could, so too. It could, but... be, it could be different. It, it, it may not be exactly proportional. Okay. 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 Uh, but I'd have to do the calculation to check, but I don't think so. Okay. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Good. All right. Uh, good. Any, any other questions? Okay. I don't see any. All right. So what about buffering capacity? Um, Remember the difference between a concentrated buffer means it has more of the acid in the conjugate base, a weak buffer, I'm sorry, a dilute buffer has less of it, right? And that greatly affects its capacity to neutralize incoming acid or incoming base, all right? So let's say we had a one, I'm just gonna keep this simple by having one liter. Now remember, if it's not one liter, you gotta account for that, okay? But I have one liter of a buffer that is 0.10 molar in acetic acid and 0.2 molar in sodium acetate. And I want to know which of the following exceeds the buffer capacity. Now, the buffer capacity gets exceeded when you use up either all the conjugate acid or all the conjugate base, or, or all the base, right? Sorry, was there a question? Um, so if I have, if my buffer has 0 0.10 moles of acetic acid, right? And 0 0.20 moles of sodium acetate, right? Then what is the maximum number of moles of OH minus that this buffer can neutralize? Well, which buffer component neutralizes OH minus? The acid or the base? The acid. The acid. So what's the absolute max number of moles that this buffer can neutralize before it's completely destroyed? 0 0.1. 0 0.10. 0 0.10 moles, right? So we say that the capacity of this buffer to neutralize OH minus is 0 0.10 moles. That's the absolute max. After that, the buffer is destroyed. What is the max number of moles of H3O plus that this buffer can neutralize? 0 0.20. 0 0.20, right? Because it's the base that neutralizes out of added H3O plus. Once you add 0 0.20 moles of H3O plus, you've completely um, used up all the base and therefore destroyed the buffer, okay? So which of these additions would destroy this buffer? Adding 0.11 moles of HCl. Adding um, 0.11 moles of HCl. Um, that, well, let's see. HCl reacts with which, with, with which component? The DNA. acid or the base? The base. The base. How many moles of base do I have? 0 0.20. 0 0.2. So I have enough to neutralize that incoming HCl, right? So what about this incoming NaOH? Do I have enough of the acid to neutralize the Na NaOH? No. 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 Okay. So adding 0.11 moles of NaOH would destroy the buffer. Does that make sense? Uh, why wouldn't adding 0.05 moles destroy it? Because you have enough of 
both of these components to completely neutralize all that and still have some leftover acid or base, right? So in other words, which, let's say HCl, 0.05 moles of HCl, what neutralizes HCl? The sodium acetate, right? How many moles of that do I have? 0.20, right? So I have 0.20, I'm only neutralizing 0.5, 0.05, I'm in good shape, right? I have enough of the, the base to neutralize all that acid. Similarly, 0.05 moles of NaOH, I have enough acid to neutralize all that base. It's only here where I've exceeded the amount of base, uh, sorry, I've exceeded the amount of, um, of the acid that I have to neutralize this amount of base. Okay. All right, let's see, let me have you try one and see if this is making sense. Question, if it uses up all of something, but doesn't go over it, does that count as destroying it? Um, yes. Okay. Yep, because you remember, a buffer has to have significant amounts of acid and its conjugate base. So if you've used up all of it, it would destroy the buffer. Right, right, okay. Good question, good clarifying question. Okay, good. Try to um, put your answer in the next 10 seconds or so. Okay, um, good. Most of you got that. Some of you put E, but that was probably before I made the clarifying point uh, about uh, what it means to destroy the buffer. So that's, I think, I think that's great. Um, but basically just to go over it really quick, right? This buffer has 0.05 moles of acid, 0.250 moles of base, right? And um, so let's go through these. If I add 0.05 moles of NAC2H302, well, that's just adding more of one of the buffer components, right? So that just makes the buffer, what, more concentrated. That doesn't, that doesn't uh, destroy the buffer. If I add 0.05 moles of the acid, well, that's just making the buffer even more effective, right? Because I'm adding more of one of the components, right? So that doesn't destroy the buffer. Adding 0.050 moles of HCl, okay, well, that reacts with this, right? It reacts with the, Na with the sodium acetate. Do I have enough sodium acetate to completely neutralize 0.050 moles of HCl? Yes, right? I have 0.25, I'm only putting in 0.5, no, no problem. Okay. Am I losing my internet? Okay. Sounds like it's still working. Okay. Um, and then how about adding 0.05 moles of NaOH? Well, the NaOH reacts with the acid, right? It reacts with the acid. So I have just enough to neutralize all that NaOH, but then I will no longer have a buffer, right? 
because a buffer needs significant amounts of both of these, right? And if I use all this up, then there's no more buffer. Okay, so that's the idea there. All right. All right, I see a couple of questions, Ryland. I um, mean, both of these we've completely neutralized one of them. Is it possible to have a reaction where you add something and you take it outside of that one to 10 ratio that we were talking about earlier? Or am I combining things that shouldn't be combined? No, no, you're right. So um, technically, right, we've gone beyond the point where we destroy the buffer because at 0 0.050, um, you know, you'd really have to have a point, you really have to have a little bit of acid left so anything, so maybe about what would it be? 90% so would be 0.045. So you could technically neutralize 0.045 moles of NaOH and still have a buffer that's in that one to 10 ratio, right? But once you get to here, then you've destroyed it all. Got it. Okay. All right, good. Uh, Taylor. Um, for this one, can you go back? Sorry. So for this one, we, for this action, we destroyed all of our acid. Correct. I'm assuming we could still add acid to this and the base buffer would take care of it. Like when you destroy that's one a great, of the- That's a great question. So the okay. answer is yes. And as you do that, you actually create more of the conjugate acid, which would, which would actually make your buffer better. Ah, uh, wait, okay, so if I understand this, if you destroy one right. buffer and then you add, what would that be, acid then yes. to this, yes. you're making a conjugate base out of that, or no, conjugate acid is Correct. what you said? Correct. Okay, that actually makes it better because yes. it like balances? Yes, exactly right. <gasps> yep. Interesting, okay. Sophia? Um, so I know this might be going back a little bit more, but if you have a buffer, that will be a buffer for any acid that's not either the acid or the conjugate base, right? So any other acid or base that's in the solution. We're only gonna worry about, um, but, but yeah, the answer is yes. A buffer is a buffer no matter for all incoming acids or bases. We're only gonna do calculations where you add strong acid or strong base to the buffer, okay? <laughs> or more of the buffer components, right? But in other words, I'm not gonna ask you to solve a problem where you have a buffer, let's say that is composed of acetic acid and sodium acetate and ask you what happens when you add HF because that turns out to be a more complicated question, okay? I'm just gonna say what happens when you add strong acid or strong base, okay? All right, very good. Now we get to the very pinnacle of the problems that I'm gonna ask you to solve, okay? Um, calculating titration pH curves is a culmination of many, many things that you've learned, all right? And in order to calculate these, you're gonna to have to apply many of these things that we've learned um, over the last couple of weeks, all right? So, uh, there's two kinds. So first of all, what is a titration? Let's start with that. And then uh, we'll do a titration of a strong acid with a strong base. You watched the video of that today, correct? And then the harder one is the, is, is the weak acid with a strong base. And you'll watch the video for that one on Monday. All right. And, and oh, that's great. If you've done them in the lab, that'll be even better. But hopefully we'll clarify uh, what's going on. So here's what happens uh, in a titration. In a titration, you have, let's say, in this case, you have a strong acid in a beaker. So these H plus ions are the, are the strong acid ions, okay? Then you titrate that, you titrate that with strong base, in this case, strong base, all right? And you, so you start adding OH minus. As you add OH minus, the OH minus neutralizes the H plus and it forms water, right? The point of a titration is to get to what's called the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, uh, the moles of acid equals the moles of base, right? So let's say that each point here represents one mole of H plus. 
the titration point happens when I've added one, two, three, four, five moles of OH minus, right? Because at that point, I've exactly neutralized all of the H plus. Um, and usually in a, in a titration in a lab, you use a, an, an indicator that changes color that lets you know, aha, you've reached the equivalence point. Okay, so that's the idea behind titration. All right, and I think um, you've probably done titrations in lab. Uh, what we're gonna do is try to calculate the pH of a titration curve. How does the pH change as, here's pH, as you add this OH minus. In other words, as you go from here to here to here and beyond, what happens to the pH of the solution? Okay. Um, let's see, I see a few questions. Uh, Sophia. Um, how can the, the indicator like phenolphthalein change color? What, what happens to it that it turns pink or? Yeah, there are some um, substances that when they get protonated, when they when you add an extra proton to them, they'll change color. And because the pH changes very, very rapidly right around the endpoint, um, that color change can be very, very sharp. Okay, where all of a sudden, you know, a majority of the molecules will become protonated and then they'll change color. Um, so it, it happens, it happens because you know, you, you basically have one chemical species in basic solution and that chemical species when it's an acidic solution changes. And when it changes, then it changes color. Does that make sense? And that's what an indicator, that's what an indicator is. Okay. And by a proton, you mean an H, not a, an actual proton, right? Pardon me? By a proton, you mean an H. Proton, um, yeah, proton is H plus. Ion. Yep, 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 proton okay. is H plus. Okay, so. Let's walk through this particular titration curve, which is what happens when a strong base is added to a strong acid. So if we just think about it very simply at the beginning, if I, at the beginning, I just have a solution of strong acid, right? So the pH is gonna be very low, right? Because the strong acid solution, all right? As you start adding base to it, the base is gonna neutralize some of that acid, right? So what's gonna to happen to the pH? It's gonna go up, okay? What we see is that at the uh, right here, at the this is called the equivalence point. That's this point right here, right? I've neutralized all the H plus, right? So if I've exactly neutralized it, what's the pH of a neutral solution? Seven, right? Beyond that, if I go beyond that, and this doesn't show it, but if I go beyond that, if I add more OH minus, right? There's no H plus left to neutralize it, right? So the solution becomes basic, right? And you see the solution become basic over here, okay? Now, what I wanna do is calculate the pH of these actual points, okay? So let's start, and here we're gonna do the titration of, let me get a new piece of paper here. Okay, so what I'm gonna have here is I'm gonna have 25 mils of 0 0.100 molar HCl. And I'm gonna titrate that with 0 0.100 molar NaOH, okay? And I want to calculate the pH as we go along, right? As I add NaOH. All right, so first of all, before I do anything else, let's calculate the volume that it takes to get to the equivalence point. In other words, how much NaOH do I have to add to get to here, all right? Well, we know the equivalence point happens when moles of acid equals moles of base, right? So the first thing to do, so volume to equivalence point. The first thing I want to do is figure out, okay, how many moles of acid do I have? Well, how do I figure that out? I have 
0 0.025 liters times 0 0.100 moles per liter. So that gives me 0 0.0025 moles of H plus, right? So how many moles of base, how many moles of OH minus do I need to neutralize that? Same amount. Same amount, right? Therefore, need 0.0025 moles of OH minus. Well, how am I going to figure out the volume that it takes to get to that many moles? Can you just yeah, I'm going to use the moles. And then I'm going to use the concentration of NaOH. In this case, it happens to be, so this is moles of OH minus, right? Times 0 0.100 moles per liter. Moles cancel, and I get 0 0.025 liters or 25.0 milliliters, right? It's no coincidence that it's the same because I made the problem simple by having the concentrations of the base and the acid be the same, right? So it takes the same amount of volume to get the same amount of moles. You with me so far? Sophia, did you have another question? Or was that from- I'm Sorry, before? it was back to the indicator. Um, so as soon as it passes equivalence point when age is seven is that it changes color, not when it's basic, right? It's right at the, the, ideally, the indicator should change color at the equivalence point. So if you okay, pick your indicator- it's already changed. To... Correct, because oh, the pH has changed, yep. Okay, so, so that's good. So now we know um, what it takes to get to the equivalence point, right? 25 milliliters. All right, now we want to calculate um, the pH after adding five milliliters of NaOH. pH at, oh, sorry, no, no, I don't wanna do that yet. I wanna get the initial pH first, initial pH, right? So what do you think? I have 25 mils of a 0.1 molar HCl solution. How do I find the initial pH? Use your concentration of your acid. Yeah. So the log. So here's where you're going to see as we move along here, you're going to have different kinds of solutions and you got to remember how to get the pH of those different kinds of solutions, right? So before you add anything, right? Before you add anything, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. What do you have? A strong acid solution, right? How do you find the pH of a strong acid solution? Well, you just take minus the log of its concentration, right? You don't have to work an equilibrium problem or anything like that. It's a strong acid, right? So the initial pH is just equal to minus the log of 0 0.100, right? Which is equal to one, okay? Can you move the paper up, please? Thank you. So there it is, there's my initial pH, okay? Now, the next point I want to calculate is pH at 5.00 milliliters of added OH minus. Okay. What is the OH minus going to react with? The HCl. The HCl. So we haven't included this equation in our neutralization equations, but we can't, but it's, it's essentially the same thing, right? It's HCl plus um, OH minus goes to H2O plus Cl minus. So that's actually a form of this equation right here, except for, sorry, not that equation. It's a form of this equation right here, except for that HCl is not a weak acid, right? It's a strong acid. But the neutralization equation is actually exactly the same, okay? So the OH minus is gonna react with the HCl. The only difference is that this is a strong acid, not a weak acid, all right? So then I can set up my Baugh table like I normally would for this equation, right? Uh, sorry, it would be, it's not equation two, it's equation number three, right? Except for, 
So far, we've used this mostly for weak acids, but we can also apply that to a strong acid. That's the difference. Okay. So what's my initial now with ball tables? What am I going to work in moles or molarity? Moles. Moles. So what's my initial number of moles of HCl? Before I add anything. Um, zero, zero, two, zero, two, five. There it is, right? That's how much I had. So 0 0.0025 moles. All right. And then I have um, about zero of this before I add anything, but this isn't really going to matter too much for this case. And then I'm going to add OH minus and at five milliliters, right? How much OH minus have I added? Well, I can calculate that out. 0 0.005 liters times 0 0.10 moles per liter, right? That gives me 0 0.0005 moles. Okay, so I'm going to add 0 0.0005, and I'm not using scientific notation just because it's a little easier to see this way. All right, so that's going to react. Now, notice I have 0 0.0005 moles of this, and I have 0 0.0025 moles of the HCl, right? So this is going to get completely consumed, right? So this is going to go to zero. What's this going to go to? 0 0.002. 0 0.0020, right? Do you see that? And then of course, Cl minus is going to go to what? Just for, zero, just for sorry, 0 0.0005. Correct, okay. But in this case, I don't care about Cl minus because this is a strong acid, right? And so Cl minus is just pH neutral. I don't have to worry about it, okay? So now in order to get the pH here, right? I need to find the H3O plus concentration at this point, right? Which is gonna be equal to what? 0 0.00200 moles divided by the total volume at this point. What's the total volume at this point? It's my initial volume plus what? Five milliliters. Plus five milliliters, right? So it's going to be 0 0.030 liters. Okay. And so what you get there is that's equal to 0 0.0667 molar, right? Is the H3O plus concentration. So the pH is minus the log of 0 0.0667, right? And that's equal to 1.18. Sorry. One point one eight. So the pH just goes up a little bit. You with me? Okay, if I do the same calculation at 10 milliliters, right? pH at 10.0 milliliters, right? What changes? In this, instead of this being 0 0.0005, what is it? 0 0.0010, right? And then if that was 0 0.0010, then this goes from 0 0.0025 to what? 0 0.0015. Correct. So that's 0 0.0015. And then I would divide that by the total volume at that point, which instead of being 30 milliliters would be 35 milliliters, right? And then I can get the next point and the next point after that and the next point after that. Okay, I just do the same thing that I did for five milliliters, but I use 10, 15 and 20, okay? Now, what happens at the equivalence point? Let's just set up our bod table one more time. So I started out with 0 0.0025 moles of that, 
right? At the equivalence point, how much have I added of OH minus? 0.0025, right? So this gets completely neutralized. It goes to almost zero. This gets completely neutralized. It goes to almost zero. And this of course goes to 0 0.0025, but that's just Cl minus, which is pH neutral, right? So what do I have? I have a solution that doesn't have either acid or base in it. I just basically have water with the chloride ion and probably sodium, right? Which is pH neutral. So what's my pH at that point? 7.0. 7 exactly. Okay, so at the equivalence point, the pH is 7. Are you with me? Now, what happens is I get past the equivalence point. Let's say at... 30.0 milliliters of added OH minus, all right? Well, at that point, let's set up my table again. I have my reaction, HCl plus OH minus goes to H2O plus Cl minus, right? I started out with 0 0.0025, right? Now I've added how much OH minus at 30 mils? How much OH minus have I added? 0 0.003. 30, Three right? Now look what happens. This all gets neutralized, so that goes to zero, but I have some of this left over, right? How much of this do I have left over? 0 0.0005 moles of that, right? Cl minus, of course, goes to 0 0.0025, right? So now what kind of a solution do I have? Now I got to think, I got to think in my head, okay, what kind of solution is this? A basic solution. A basic solution, a solution of a strong base. How do I figure out the pH of a strong base solution? Well, I got to figure out the concentration of OH minus, right? Concentration of OH minus is 0 0.0005 moles, right? divided by, now what's the volume at this point? It's my original 25 milliliters plus, how much plus base have I added? 30 milliliters. 30 milliliters, right? So I gotta divide by that whole thing. And um, that comes out to be equal to 0 0.00909 molar. Okay, is my OH minus concentration. So my POH is minus the log of that. Because it's a strong base, right? So my, P, my POH is what, 2.04. So my pH is equal to 14 minus 2.04 is equal to 11.96. So there's my next point, oops right there. Does that make sense? Taylor. Uh, if you continue adding the same amounts, will it turn into a mirror of the acid? Like, uh, does that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for example, if I do 35 milliliters, uh, I get pH 12.22. And the only difference there, right, would be that instead of having 0 .0, 0 0.0005 moles, I'd have 0 0.0010 moles, right? And I take that number and I divide by the total volume at that point, and I get 12.22. Okay. At 40 milliliters, I get 12.36. At 50 milliliters, I get 12.52. So there's my entire titration curve all the way through. Okay. Megan. Do you mind uh, just quickly running through the bot table that you have up again, why you're choosing to do the 0 0.0005 moles? Yes. So remember in a bot table, what you're comparing is two reactants, right? And it's kind of a, a limiting reactant problem, right? So if I have 0 0.0025 moles of HCl and 0 0.0030 moles of OH minus, no, and they react one to one, right? Then this is my limiting reactant and this is in excess, right? 
So this gets completely consumed and goes to zero. In so doing, it reacts with exactly 0 0.0025 moles of OH minus. So therefore, out of the 0 0.0030 moles of OH minus that I had, I now have 0 0.0005 moles left. Does that make sense? That, that makes sense. As opposed to mm -hmm. up here, where they were in exact stoichiometric ratios, right? One, I had 0 0.025 moles of this, I have 0 0.0025 moles of that. They completely neutralize each other and nothing's left, right? As opposed to here, at the beginning where I had 0 0.0025 moles of HCl, but only 0 0.0005 moles of OH minus added, right? So now this is the limiting reactant. This gets completely consumed. When that gets completely consumed, it uses up 0 0.0005 moles of that. And that goes down to 0 0.0020. Does that make sense? So this is just straight yes. stoichiometry, right? One to one stoichiometry. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's review. How do I find the initial pH? Negative log, log of your acid. Negative the log of the concentration, right? It's a strong acid. How do you find the pH of a strong acid? You take negative the log of its concentration and you're done. Okay. In this section, I have a reaction where the H the H3O plus or the HCl is in excess. Right? I'm 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 reacting it with OH minus, but I have more HCl than I have OH minus, right? So it stays acidic. And I just basically got to figure out, okay. After I add the OH minus, how much HCl is left, right? And then I can calculate the pH by dividing the moles of HCl that are left divided by the total volume. Here, I'm stoichiometrically one-to-one, -one, right? I've completely neutralized all the H3O plus, and I've used up all the H3O plus and all the OH minus, so I have exactly a neutral solution, pH equals seven. Past here, I have OH minus in excess. I've added more OH minus than I originally had HCl in the solution. So I still have neutralized all the H H HCl, but now I have extra OH minus, right? So on this side of the curve, I have extra HCl. On this side of the curve, I have extra OH minus, right? Does that make sense? Okay, questions on that? Good, 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 good. All right, the next one, which we're not gonna have time to do today, but I will, we'll be able to get just the first point on this, just to, get our, just to get our feet a little bit wet to start thinking about it, would be what happens when you do a titration curve for a strong base added to a weak acid. So in that case, instead of having um, a strong base here, right? I'm just gonna have a weak base. So I'm gonna do the exact same problem, but now instead of a strong base, I'm gonna have a weak base. Okay, so this is the problem I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the curve, and then we'll probably get to it uh, next time. But um, what I wanna titrate here is uh, 25.0 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar um, acetic acid. No, sorry, formic acid is what I want to do, HCHO2. Okay, and I'm going to titrate it with 0 0.100 molar and AOH. Okay, so the only difference between this problem and the problem we just did is that instead of having a strong acid here, I have a weak acid, okay? So uh, I wanna wait for this for a second. Um, okay. So let's think about this. How do I find the initial pH? I haven't added any NaOH to this yet. What kind of a solution do I have? 
A weak acid solution. Weak acid solution, exactly right. How do I find the pH of a weak acid solution? Don't you have to make a nice table? Yes, yes. You have to work an equilibrium problem with an ice table. Which equation are you going to use? One, two, three, or four? Four? Wait, one. Oh, one. One, one right? Um, this is just the pH of a weak acid. The weak acid is going to ionize water, and you're going to work an equilibrium problem, right? So to find that initial pH, the pH, you know, just, just forget you're doing a titration for a minute and say, hey, how do I find the pH of a weak acid solution? Well, I got to work an equilibrium problem, right? HCHO2 plus H2O in equilibrium with H3O plus plus CHO2 minus, right? There's my equation number one. It's an equilibrium problem, right? I need to work in, I need to set up an ice table, not a bog table. And I need to work in? Molarity. Molarity, right? So 0 0.100 0 molar, right? Initial, uh, this is about zero, this is about zero. It's gonna go to the right, minus X, plus X, plus X. Notice the different kind of table, right? Different kind of problem than a neutralization problem. This is 0 0.100 0 minus X, this is X, this is X. I go x squared, 0 0.1 minus x is equal to Ka, right? Solve that for x, right? Uh, in this case, uh, what do I have? I have um, that the Pa, the x is equal to 4.24 times 10 to the minus 3 because Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4, right? So that's equal to the H3O plus concentration. Um, this is initial pH, initial pH. Um, that's equal to the H3O plus concentration. So pH is equal to minus the log of that. And I get uh, 2.37. Notice the difference. This is less acidic than the strong acid, right? Of the same concentration, why? It doesn't fully ionize. Right, it's a weak acid, right? So it doesn't fully ionize, right? So that makes sense. Okay, that's the initial pH. So let me just, uh, let, me, let me ask you one more thing. Uh, actually, two, two more points. I got five more minutes. I got, I got enough time for both of these points. The first point is, what about the volume to get to the equivalence point? So that's my initial pH. How do I find the volume to the equivalence point? I noticed the initial pH was different for the weak acid than the strong acid, okay? But the volume to the equivalence point, since these concentrations are all the same, the volume to the equivalence point is exactly the same, right? Because that happens when moles of acid equals moles of base, right? How many moles of acid do I have? Moles of HA, sorry, moles of HCHO2 is equal to 0 0.025 liters times 0 0.100 moles per liter is equal to 0 0.0025 moles, right? That's how many moles of acid I have, right? Of HCHO2. So how many moles of base do I need to get to neutralize that? 0 0.0025. Yeah, 0 0.0025 moles. I need that many moles of OH minus, right? So what volume of OH minus do I need? Is equal to 0 0.0025 moles times 0 0.100 moles per liter, right? And that gives me 0 0.025 liters or 25.0 milliliters, right? So the volume to the equivalence point is exactly the same as if it was a strong base. That makes no difference, okay? But the initial pH is not the same, right? Because it's a weak acid, not a strong one, okay? So now, I wanna leave you with one. So, so he, here's a titration curve, 
All right, we'll go through all of this next time. But what we know so far is that the volume to the equivalence point is exactly the same as if it was a strong base with the same concentrations. Okay. And the other thing we know is that the initial pH is solved a little differently. I got to do an equilibrium problem, right? For the weak acid. What we're going to see is that we, as we start adding OH minus to this weak acid, it's going to convert that weak acid into a buffer solution. Right now, why is that? Let's go here. Let's say I have a weak acid like this. Okay, a weak acid in equilibrium with its conjugate base in H3O plus. Okay, so these things are in equilibrium. Now, what happens if I add OH minus to that? What does it react with? The weak acid or its conjugate base? The weak acid. The weak acid. So notice what happens when it reacts with the weak acid. What does it make? More acid. Not more acid. More conjugate base. More of the conjugate base. So now look. What has this solution become? A buffer. A buffer. A buffer. Exactly right. OK? So this is what I call a buffer in disguise, all right? If I have a weak acid and I add strong, this was, uh, Taylor, this is what you had asked about earlier. Remember how I said that you can, you can reform the buffer? This is how it happens. You add OH minus, it reacts with the weak acid, it forms some new conjugate base. Now all of a sudden you have weak acid conjugate base, ding, 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 buffer, right? How do you figure out the pH of a buffer? Uh, pKa plus log of base over acid. Henderson Hasselbalch equation, right? Exactly right. That is exactly right. So, what we're going to see is that so far here, at the beginning, we have to do a weak acid problem. As we get into this range, we have to do a buffer problem. What we'll see later is when we get here, we actually have to do a weak base problem. Okay? So in this titration curve, we get to review all the kinds of problems that we've learned how to do. Isn't that fun? <laughs> There's nothing new here. It's just a matter of recognizing what you have at each stage, okay? That's the challenge. Um, I had a question about the pH at the equivalence point. The pH of at the equivalence point of a weak acid with a strong base is not seven. The volume at the equivalence point is the same in both cases, but the pH is not. And here's an easy way to think about it. If I have a, a strong base and a strong acid, they exactly neutralize each other, right? And pH equals seven. If I have a weak acid and a strong base, who do you think wins? The weak acid or the strong base? Strong base. The strong base. So the pH is a little bit higher than seven, right? If it was the other way around, if I was trying titrating a weak base with a strong acid, guess who wins? Acid. The acid. The strong acid and the pH is a little bit less than seven. Okay. I see a couple of questions. Sorry to ignore you, Ryland. Um, I guess this is just a thing I noticed. Why do we always run the titration curves this way? Why can't we ever start with like a high pH and go to a low pH? You would if you were titrating a weak base with a strong acid. Yeah. In this case, because you're titrating a weak acid with a strong base, the solution is initially acidic, right? Because it's a weak acid solution, right? Gotcha, but there's, but, nothing, there's nothing preventing us from doing it the other way around. Well, if you're titrating a weak acid with a strong base, it's always going to be this way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're titrating a weak base with a strong acid, then it's the other way. No. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sophia. Um, sorry, for when you solved uh, for K, you just you just grabbed K from the constant table, right? Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll go over this again next time. I just want to introduce it. Make sure you watch the video before Monday. This is really confusing. And uh, it, you have to go through it kind of slowly and go through it several times to really understand it, okay? But you can do it. It's nothing new. That, it's nothing that you haven't seen before. It's just a matter of constantly seeing the kind of solution you have 
and then pulling out the way to find the pH of that particular type of solution. Okay. So watch the video carefully and we'll go over it again in class on Monday and hopefully it'll become crystal clear. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, just one quick question. Um, so we started with the strong base and strong acid and it was yep. a pH of one. And yeah. this is like a pH of like two and some yep. and also the pH um, at the equivalence point went up by, oh, I guess that's not really one. Oh wait, yeah, that would be one and some. Yeah. Is that the same? No. Like, no. No. Okay. That's no. not the same. Okay. No, it's not the same. And it okay. depends on the particular combination. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Our time is completely up. So I really appreciate um, I really appreciate your attention today and you're staying with me. This is it. This is the hump, right? If you can get over this, you're home free in this class. All right. This is the hardest part. We're right in it right now. Uh, stick with it. Give yourself some time to work on this this weekend and, and you will understand it. <laughs> I don't wanna. <laughs> yes, you do, right? You can do this. This is difficult, but you can do it, all right? So uh, stick with it, don't give up. Just put in some time this weekend and you'll get this, all right? I'm gonna stop the recording here and I'm gonna dismiss you. I will always, uh, I will of course stick around afterwards for questions.